Hello, Foxy listeners, and thank you for tuning in to episode 148. I am super excited about today's episode. Not only do I get to sit with one, but two amazing gentlemen who are really changing the world and a lot of people's lives, including my own. And I wanted to give you a little bit of an intro to this because there is something so special about somebody who comes into the world and into your life and just releases so much happiness and joy that you find yourself smiling for hours after you meet them. And that's exactly what John did for me. Besides reminding me that there is no obstacle that is too hard to overcome, there is nothing that you can't accomplish when you put your mind to it. So John and Mark are a father and son team, and they founded John's Crazy Socks. Now this helps because I love socks, and I socks is where I go sort of crazy with design. And they have the world's largest sock store, over 4,000 offerings of different socks. Make sure you head to the social media. You can see all of the new ones that I bought from them because I'll be showcasing those. And they really wanted to do this social enterprise with a mission to really spread happiness. Now, John is an entrepreneur, of course, starting this business. He's also a special Olympic athlete who just happens to have Down syndrome. Now, more than half of the employees that they have have a differing ability and giving back has been baked into every single thing that they do. They commit to creating very personal experiences for their customers. So every package includes a thank you note from John and some candy. Mine were Skittles. I was very excited about my Skittles. Mark and John have also been named EY Entrepreneurs of the Year, and their advocacy work has seen them testify twice before the U.S. Congress, as well as speaking to the United Nations. But more importantly, John is showing the world that if you can just put a smile on your face, you can find joy wherever you go. So I hope that you sit back, relax, and enjoy this very, very special episode. I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and love to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So Foxy listeners, I am super excited to have you joining me today. As you all know, from listening to my podcast, my biggest tagline is have fun because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? And so I really love searching out people who are all about sharing happiness. And that is why I'm really excited to have John and Mark on the show today. Cause John is one of those people who knows how to spread happiness wherever he goes. Mark and John, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Ray. I, I really appreciate you being here. We're excited to be here. Thank you for having us on your show. It's wonderful. So for those that, you know, haven't followed you, haven't, you know, felt your product on their feet, give us a little bit of your history and your background of how you got to owning one of the largest, uh, one of the world's largest sock distributors. Oh, it stores. is the world's largest. It is, yeah. And we'll dare someone to change. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Why don't you introduce us so people know who we are? So, Dad, uh, my name is John. In my part of my dad's mark, we are John's Crazy Socks. And what's our mission? It's spreading happiness. So um, we'll share our, our, our origin story. Yeah. Because origin stories matter, right? That gives you your DNA. Yeah, exactly. So we just celebrated our fifth anniversary. So let's go back a little more than five years. And our story starts a fall, I, I, in a small, a small log, log cabin, cabin in the Good. woods. Oh, no, not really. Not really. <laughs> but in the suburbs of New York City, out on Long Island, in a town called Huntington. And where were you? I, I was in the Huntington house. Where I'm going to be my last year of school. So, um, this is similar to what you have in Canada. In the US, if you have a disability, you can stay in the school system until you turn 21. Okay. And then once you're going to turn 21, then they say, get out. We've had enough. Right. Um, and, and so, John, we should introduce, you know, so, you are an entrepreneur. Yes, I am. An athlete. Yep. A dancer. Yep. A philanthropist. I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a lover. You're a lover. Um, and you also happen to have Down syndrome. Yes, I am. And, and what do you say about Down syndrome? I have Down syndrome. Down that move, and never hold me, never hold me back. Does not. But because of that Down syndrome, John could stay till he was 21. But now he's about to turn, or then he was about to turn 21 and had to figure out what was going to come next. And what were you looking at? I love that job, program, and school. I tell myself that I don't like. No. He didn't see any good options for him. He couldn't see any meaningful work. Um, there was waiting lists for different programs, and many of them were just like holding patterns. Mm, uh, yeah. And, and unfortunately, this is true for too many people with differing abilities. You mentioned your cousin who has trouble finding meaningful work. In the U.S., fewer than one in five people with a disability is employed. This is awful. Mm -hmm. John here. He is a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. If he didn't find a job he wanted, what were you going to do? I said, I want to I want to make one. And what did you tell me? Uh, I said, I want to go into business with my dad. A nice father and son being together. So, Kanya, I'm very lucky. I've got three sons. John's the youngest of those three sons. And this is one I could work with. <laughs> so, so he said, so it was okay. good he was the one that asked <laughs> <laughs> right but my middle son who I love dearly uh, worked with us so we're close but we worked together for a bit and uh, that wasn't going to last it, it, we would wind up both like in a pool of blood with axes in our heads but John and I that's okay so, so there we were okay we'll go into business and we had to figure out what we're going to do. And like many entrepreneurs, John had a lot of ideas. Some of them were even good ideas. <laughs> what was one of your ideas? One of them is a food truck. I have an idea from the movie Chef uh, uh, John Farrow. A movie about a father and son budding a um, food truck. And... This seemed like a lot of fun. And you were thinking what we could sell right. and make, where we would put the food truck. Uh, but we ran into a problem. We can't cook. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, you know, that's sometimes that's it with entrepreneurs, right? We come up with great ideas and then we go, that would be awesome. But I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but right before the U.S. Thanksgiving, 
John had his eureka moment. I did. I want to sell crazy socks. Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful. It's clear. I'll always let me be me. We used to drive around looking for these socks. So he says that, and I figured, okay, you know what? If you love yeah. them this much, surely other people do too, and we could find our tribe. So we went the lean startup rep. We didn't prepare a detailed business plan. It was, let's just get something up and running and see how people respond. So you already had the name. I, I got a name. I took a website and I uh, designed it. Um, we set up a website on a good Canadian company on the Shopify platform. Um, we got some inventory. We we're bootstrapping. So you have to make do with what you have. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page. And I would take out my cell phone and we made videos. And who was in those videos? I am. I'm talking about socks. Socks, socks, more socks. <laughs> we noticed something. Word began to spread. Yeah. And what day did we open? We will be on a Friday, December 9th, 2016. We didn't know what to expect. But in fact, we got a flood of orders. Yeah. And most of them were local, which made, excuse me, made sense. What did we do with those first orders? Our home delivery, and we get red boxes, and I can put socks in, I put socks in the box, and I, I, I can put in a dig in the arrow, I put in a hundred I kisses, I put in candy in. So we got these boxes, the socks, yep. the thank you note, the candy, Absolutely. loaded up the car. And we drove around and John knocked on doors delivering the socks. Right. There were some nights he's knocking on doors at 1030 at night. Just John here with your socks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and have the customers respond. Customers love said and they took a photo, took a pictures, and post it on the social media. I would get express. We had customers ordering again just to get John to come back to their house. Um, so by the end of that month, really two weeks, we had shipped 452 orders, had $13,000 in revenue, and we said, we have something here. We could build this business. Right? We learned. We learned uh, people want to buy socks. Two, people want to buy socks for me. They, you know, they related to John. They liked yeah. the fact that the personal touch of the candy and the note. They liked the fact that we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am a Special Olympics athlete. Uh, one thing that surprised us, we got a very emotional response from people, um, from families that had a child with a differing ability or had a relative. Um, we didn't expect that. And, and that continues to this day. Yeah. Plus, you know this, Tanya, you learn from doing. So we learned that this young man. I did an old man. And this old man, we could sell <laughs> socks. So that's how we got started. Once we got started, then we said, okay, now we're going to grow this business. We knew what we were about. Our mission? A spread happiness. Everything was designed to spread happiness. And, you know, a lot of companies, they do those mission statements. They put them on the wall. and Nobody knows what it says and nobody cares. This, that spreading happiness is made manifest in everything we do. And it's the criteria we use to judge every decision. We built a slightly different type of business model. It's a social enterprise. So we have both a social and a business purpose and they feed off of each other. They're indivisible. If all we were doing was selling socks, you wouldn't know us. You wouldn't be talking to us. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, if all we did, did was had a nice little story, you wouldn't talk to us either. It wouldn't have the impact. Um, and to give you an idea of what's happened, you, know, you mentioned you know, one of the world's largest sock stores. Well, when we started, we could put all of the different socks we had on one table. 
today, how many different socks do we have? We have 4,000 different kinds of socks. That means I said. Over 4,000 wow. socks. More than any other store in the world. That makes John the owner of the world's largest socks. That's right. right. Very cool. Really cool. But we've built the business on five pillars. It's pretty and hope. Give it back. Find product you can love and make a partner. And we've added a fit as we've grown. Make it a great place to work. So uh, let me kind of walk through those quickly. Mm -hmm. If our mission is to spread happiness, if we want our customers to be happy and the community to be happy, we have to start here. Our colleagues have to be happy working here. They have to be, you know, we have to offer a mission worthy of their commitment. Everybody has to know why their job matters. They're going to be energized and engaged. So making it a great place to work is really at the foundation of what we do. The making it personal, to this day, every package gets... I get a thinking of for me and candy. Um, our sock wranglers, that's what we call the pickers in our pick and pack warehouse. They'll put their, if you order from us on your packing slip, you're going to see their picture and name because they put that on every order they pack right? because there are actual people here. Uh, we have now shipped 370,000 packages to 88 different countries. But if we get an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I, 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 I'm still doing home to the feed. I'm going, I'm going to get dark. Right? We're always looking for a way to connect to our customers. Um, and everybody does it. So here's an anecdote. of We sell socks for diabetics, you know, these compression socks. Well, one day, one of our packers comes and says, you know, we're sending socks to diabetics and we're sending them candy. <laughs> So now we have a supply of sugar-free candy that if you order diabetic socks, we send you that. Um, you will hear e-commerce businesses, you know, everybody knows or should know to segment your, uh, your email so you can more personalize it. Yes, we do that. But we also segment our fulfillment. So everybody gets the same kind of ingredients but if it's your first order, you get one package. If it's your third order, you're getting a different package. I mean, anything we can do to make that personal connection, to create an experience. We're not just interested in transactions. And then fun products you can love. Yeah. We have to have a great e-commerce business. We never want to be a pity buy, you know, buy for me because buy, buy for us because China's down syndrome. We have to have the, you know, the great bones of a business. So the website has to be great. The selection has to be great, the 4,000 signs. The products have to be great. We have over 29,000 five-star reviews. And the service has to be great. If we do same-day shipping, if an order comes in today by three o'clock, it's going out today. We do better shipping than Amazon. And Jeff Bezos over at Amazon, he's not putting a thank you note in candy nope. in those packages. No. Or even listening, you know, to, I think one of the greatest things that you, you know, that you said is that you're so willing to listen to the employees, you know, who are out on the floor, who have ideas that can make such a huge difference. And there's a lot of employers, you know, I've, I've worked in a lot of franchise and, you know, and owned warehousing and stuff and have seen too many times that people grow and they forget that some of the best ideas come from some of the smallest positions. Yes. Um, I mean, I'll tell you anecdotally, I spent much of my career in the healthcare field. And so, so I ran some healthcare management companies and, and some consulting firms and this would be a fairly basic scenario. Mm -hmm. The hospital would hire us because they were having trouble in their emergency room, that things weren't running smoothly and they, uh, they weren't maybe making the money they wanted to. And they'd say, come in and help us. What's the first thing we do? Go down to the emergency room and listen to the workers, which 
that corporate VP could have done if he just got out of his office. Um, just go listen to the people doing the work. Yeah, because they'll tell you exactly how to fix it because they know. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, uh, I love that. So then there's uh, the second pillar is the giving back. So we told you we pledge 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics, but we do more than that. We create products that raise awareness and celebrate causes and raise money for those causes. So what was the first awareness sock you made? First one is a Down syndrome awareness sock. John designed the world's first Down syndrome socks. And they celebrate people with Down syndrome and raise money for the National Down Syndrome Society. But we have autism awareness. Yep, uh, we have uh, no, I am a We have the pet rescue socks, yep. right? The cerebral palsy yep. socks. Yeah, and we have a healthcare superhero sock. I, I train to uh, to fr frontline workers. Right to celebrate and thank frontline workers. Yep. And those have raised over fifty thousand dollars. Wow, frontline workers. Um, so you know, it's not enough to just sell stuff. You got to give back. You got to connect. We sponsor an autism can do scholarship. Um, we we support local charities. That's it's part of being a good citizen. It's part of being connected to the audience and to our community. Um, and it's not well. We'll wait to the end of the year and see if we made money and write a check. Right. You got to engage. But the most important pillar is it in home. We want to show the world what people with differing abilities can do. So John here, he's got Down syndrome. We don't put John in the back. We right. don't say, right. oh, go be quiet. He's the face of the company. More than half our colleagues have a differing ability. We, and then that's not enough. We want to, we create content. We turn our processes into content and share that on our social media platforms. Look what folks can do. We host tours and work groups from schools and social service agencies. We do speaking engagements. Earlier this morning, we were at a local high school, but we've spoken before 5,000 people at a Microsoft conference or 3,000 people at an Ernst & Young conference. We've crisscrossed Canada, the US and Mexico. We, we visited up in your neck of the woods as part of a, a tour with the U.S. State Department, speaking in uh, that that took us to Ottawa and to Vancouver. Uh, yeah. We did individual trips to Calgary and Edmonton and Saskatoon. Right. Um, all and, and we do advocacy work. We'll stand up for the rights of people with different abilities. We've been very fortunate to be given a platform that people are more willing to listen to us. And that creates an obligation on our part to speak up. So we've testified twice before the US Congress. We've spoken at the United Nations. Uh, we just made arrangements. We're gonna to speak to the New York Assembly in uh, next month. We get to meet with different legislators and executives. Um, and we're always making that point. To look what people with different abilities can do. So all that rolls up. To John's crazy socks, right? So, at the end of the day, we're not really a sock store. The socks become the physical manifestation of the story and the mission, and our customers are part of it. And when they, if you buy from us, you're helping us employ people with different abilities. You're helping show what people can do. You're helping us give back, and most of all. You're helping us spread happiness. So it's all pretty cool. Well, it's a really good thing, I think, that you couldn't cook. <laughs> well, you're learning though, right? I do. You're learning to cook. <laughs> I do. I try we're, to. We're good at eating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure there's a lot of businesses that are out there that, you know, have thought about hiring somebody. Um, but there, there's always something that stops them or they have, um, I guess what I would say, preconceived notions of 
you know, what a person can or can't do. And I was telling you a little bit off air about, about my niece who is blind and deaf and often, you know, works now in, as an administrator, but oftentimes had so many people say, well, you can't work on a computer, like you're blind. And she'd say, no, no, I can see it at the tip of my nose. And, uh, you know, but there was always that sort of roadblock that was sort of put in front of her. So what is some advice you can give to a business if they're like, you know what, I, I want to help, I want to do this, but how do I start? How do I make sure that I am creating an environment that is going to be able to nurture this so that I can be one of those people? So let's start with the premise. Don't hire people simply because it's a good thing to do. It is. Don't hire people simply because it'll make you feel good. It will. Hire people because it's good business. Because if I'm in, we're running a business, we want the best possible people for our job. To do that, you have to consider the broadest possible pool. If you exclude people arbitrarily, you already are saying we can't get the best possible. And then focus on what people can do, not what they can't do. And pay attention to what you're asking the person to do and assess them on how they can perform the job that you want them to do and leave the extraneous things out. Yeah. So, you know, I'll give you a couple, I'll give you a, a historical example to put it in some context. In 1947, Robinson to play baseball for them. And in doing so, they broke the color barrier. They hired a black athlete. The next two teams to sign black athletes were the Cleveland Indians and the then New York baseball giants. Guess what? They became the best teams in baseball. Now think about those as businesses. What they said was, we previously arbitrarily ruled out we wouldn't hire a whole group of people. And once we said, well, that's silly. We just want to get the best baseball players. Well, that's what they did. And it gave them a competitive advantage over others. I'll give you our business. You know, the first thing to understand, the two of us, we're a couple of knuckleheads selling some. Right. We have no special training. We have no government supports. We have no special programs. We just hire people because they can do the job. So we run our own, we do our own fulfillment, meaning we run our own pick and pack warehouse. Yeah. Anybody who sells online has to have a pick and pack warehouse. You may outsource that, the largest, most of it is outsourced to Amazon. Um, but if you run your own, you've got to hire pickers and packers. Like I said, we call our sock ramblers, right? So we have learned over time, we fill that job by pulling from three different labor pools, people with different abilities, moms, because it's not heavy lifting. There are some dads in there and we schedule things in four hour shifts. So you can put your kid on the bus in the morning, go to work and pick your kid up from the bus in the evening. And then, just day, you know, laborers who are looking for a $15 an hour starting wage. By far, the best labor pool for us are people with different abilities. They want to be here. They're excited to work. They're reliable. They focus on what they can do. And they do a great job. Our hiring, this is what we do. We give you training. We'll give you free training on how to do the job. And when you're ready, you have to pass the sock wrangler test. You have to pick six orders in 30 minutes or less and basically show us you can do the job. 
Nothing extraneous. We're not asking you to prove things that have nothing to do with the drug. You pass that test, you get the drug. Around these parts, we're on Long Island. There is a growing labor shortage. Employers cannot find enough good workers. And yet, we have no trouble finding people. We have a surplus of applicants because we will draw from a larger pool. So um, I could go on and give examples. Uh, you know, some people will dismiss it and say, oh, you're a small business. And that's true. We could tell you about lots of small businesses like we're Rising Tide Car Wash in Florida or Spectrum Design in New York that hire people with different abilities or Ventures ATL in, in Atlanta. But, oh, let's take this little software company based in Redmond, Washington. You've probably heard of them. They're called Microsoft. So they pick their heads up and say, you know, they're in, they're in fierce competition to find enough programmers and people with technical skills. And they pick their heads up and say, you know, a lot of people with autism are very good with technical skills. How come we don't hire anybody with autism? Well, they can answer that question themselves because many of these folks can't get past the interview. They may not look you in the eye. They may not give you a firm handshake. Microsoft said, oh, that's our problem. So they changed their interview process. And guess what? They now hire lots of people on the spectrum. And that gives them a competitive advantage over other technical firms that aren't doing it. Or IBM, another company that most people have heard of. Mm -hmm. They started a neurodiversity hiring program. One of the people they hired, Dylan Ratliff, gets assigned to, uh, you know, they hire him and assign him to a client site to work on quality software testing. Dylan gets there and starts performing, he's performing well. But he's now looking at the software and realizing, oh, I can make this better. He had a different perspective. That led them to overhaul their software. Dylan has now earned multiple patents for the company and several promotions. You think they'd let they hired Dylan? Um, yeah. And Dylan, I think I think that's just it, right? Like I think that that is a big lesson for those people that are listening today is that we need to get back to really connecting with our employees and listening to their ideas, as opposed to thinking we have it all figured out and we know the way. Um, because, you know, some of, like you said, some of the best ideas are ones that are so simplistic in their thought. Um, and those are the ones that make the hugest impact, just like deciding that you want to make a really fun pair of socks and look at the impact. Yes. Yes. And make sure that you, people frequently I, you know, listen to employers and, and what is it? It's ignorance, it's fear. And then that gives rise to fear. They don't know, they don't have experience and they're worried. Don't, and they, you start thinking about all these extraneous things. So I, I'll give you an example of this. In New York City, the firefighter, the fire department, you take a written test, and if you get past the written test, you have to take a physical test. Well, for decades, there were no women in the fire department. And the fire department's answer was, well, nobody can pass the test. Well, somebody, you know, some people went to court and they examined the test. And the test had all these crazy physical feats that had nothing to do with being a firefighter. Once you remove those extraneous tests, guess what? Now women become firefighters and they excel. Right? And it's, it's, nobody dumbed down the test. It, they didn't weaken anything. Mm -hmm. They just took out the things that had nothing to do with the job. And, and so part of what our approach is, 
is we just share what we do. We welcome other employers in to see what we do. Um, because we want them to, you know, it's, it's show, don't tell. Yeah. Look, look what can happen. And it's not an exaggeration to say, we're knuckleheads running this place. So if we can figure this out, you can figure it out too. But I think, you know, I think that having that personality is what makes the socks so good. Like I spend so much time just on the website and then I did it again this morning because I, you know, I clicked on and I was like, oh, they have all about book socks now on the, yes. you know, on the page. And so I was having fun reading them and I'm like, yes, I need a pair of socks that says it is always okay to buy more books. So I was like, these are, these are great. And I love them because I think that people are more willing to be a little bit more crazy or a little bit more adventurous with socks and with the design of their socks than they are, say, with a t-shirt or, yes. you know. May many of us wear uniforms to work. It could be a sock, it could be a suit, it could be, you know, a dress suit, or it could be polos and a khaki. But our socks are a little bit, a little way for us to say, Here's who I am. I get to express myself. I get to have fun. And that's one of the reasons we have so many different ones. We've had very smart people come in and tell us, oh, you shouldn't have more than a thousand products. You gotta limit your number of SKUs. And they're right, I understand what they're thinking. But not for our customers. Our customers want to be able to personalize everything they do. That's part of the joy of it. And yes. John helps pick socks and you help design socks, I right? But all of our colleagues help pick socks and our customers help pick socks. And we're always looking for ideas. So where can, you know, what new thing can we go and offer? So for each of you, what is, you know, what is one of your favorite designs that, that you have? What's your favorite? Sock. My favorite one is a down at home superhero sock. I like the shark socks, the white male shark socks. Oh, I love those. I like the Sherlock Holmes socks. I, 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 I really get it at beanies. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some Sasquatch socks of like, but you know, it depends. It can depend on your mood. So, John here, you know, you're a very serious businessman, right? Right. But what do you wear every Saturday? <laughs> I have poop emoji socks. Poop emoji. <laughs> because you can take the boy out of <laughs> junior high. You cannot take the junior high out of the boy. <sighs> uh, oh, that's good. That's good. And, you know, <clears throat> what I, I do love the, the vast... Um, amount of SKUs because I think it's just that it's it's fun to shop around it's fun to kind of you know even be able to sort of send them as as gifts and and just to kind of you know going back to spreading a little bit of happiness like every time I see them or I you know if I see somebody wearing like some fun design or something like that it always makes me smile even if I don't know who they are it's just like it becomes a conversation starter you can yeah. ask their socks so they'll tell you and at our website we have some challenges um you know part of it is you want to make it easy to buy stuff but also we want to share the story and other things going on and there's a lot of stuff happening and if you look at the bottom of our website there are links to like every tuesday john hosts a dance party and there's links to um our uh speaking engagements or to the scholarship or you know a lot of different things um, but one of the ideas we've had right from the beginning we want to be a, we want the experience of scrolling through the website to be fun that you could lose yourself looking at different socks and reading different descriptions of the socks at the same time though we have to make it easy for people to find what they want and not get lost. So we're always kind of make, working on that balance. Um, but I love to hear you say, oh, I'm just scrolling through and finding different things. We, we love it when customers do that. Yeah, 
Well, and you know, we're going to make sure that we have all of the links so that people can go and they can start doing their scrolling themselves and purchasing, you know, their, their favorite socks and put a little bit more fun, a little bit more happiness into their day, because I don't think it matters if you know, you're heading to school or whether you're, you know, making multi-million dollar deals in the boardroom. I mean, I was looking on the website this morning and I was like, I really need the socks with Grover on them because I would love to wear those to some big corporate meetings when I used to work in the government and see the looks on people's faces when they go, is that Grover on your socks? And you can go, yeah, they're John socks. (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, (laughs) yes. Um, Well, and there are other options, right? We, We have more and more gift packs and gift bags. Plus there's the Sock of the Month Club. You can get a dose of happiness delivered to your door once a month, but a surprise new pair of socks and people love that. That's our single most popular item. Yeah, which is, you know, we're seeing more and more of those types of subscription things. And I think this is a nice one because not only do you get some happiness to you, but you're also spreading happiness. And I think, especially in the time that we're in, people are looking for something. So this not only makes you feel good, but you're also, you know, helping out a business and you're helping out really good causes. So it's sort of a win, win, win. Right. Everybody, everybody is part of this experience, right? If you, when you get a package from us on the outside, you see John's smiling face, you open it up, you get your socks, you get that handwritten note from John. And on the flip side of that, is the story of John's crazy socks and our giving back. You get your candy. On the pack and slip, you see the picture and the name of the people that packed your order. So you're not just getting socks. That's a dose of happiness. That's gonna make you feel good. And we love hearing from customers who tell us, when I put on your socks, I just feel better. I feel happy. Yeah. That's. So I'm going to put a challenge out to the Foxy listeners after they listen to this episode, I'm going to head after we, you know, stop recording here. And I think I need some more doses of happiness. So I'm going to put a challenge out to everybody to go to the website. We're going to have the links and I want you to order a pair of socks, at least one. Um, And I want to actually start a campaign where we are putting out pictures of not only the socks that we received, but a thank you to those people that put it together. Because I think oftentimes, you know, we forget that. And I love that you put the picture of who it was that packed it. Because oftentimes we forget that there's a human who put some love and care and attention into bringing you that joy. And on top of that, come on, who doesn't love to get a package in the mail that is not a bill? (laughs) <laughs> yes who doesn't love a little bit of happiness coming in right um yes <laughs> so we'll make sure that we have all of the links so what what is coming up for you guys do you have any like special promotions that are coming up or you know you you had mentioned that you had some speaking engagements and stuff like that coming up what what kind of shameless plugs can you can you give well, me we, people? We can tell you about you know specific things. St. Patrick's Day we're going to run. Um, we're running another promotion for the Special Olympics, um, and then there'll be World Down Syndrome Day on March twenty first. Um, Autism Awareness Month is April. Mother's Day turns out people spend much more on mothers than they do on fathers. Um, <laughs> well. Our strategy this year has been, we're going to do less to do more Um, because we get a lot of ideas, but after a while, you could be like that squirrel chasing every shiny ball. Right. Um, So yes, we're deepening what we do at our website. We are growing our B2B business. For years, people have called us up and we've made custom socks for them or put gift bags. And we said, huh, what do you think would happen if we actually marketed that? So, you know, we're making custom socks for people. We put together gift programs. We have a charity fundraising program. Um, Third, we only have four. Third 
is we're going to be shipping wholesale by the fourth quarter. Um, we already are selling on Zappos. We were the first SOC company with Zappos, uh, with Zapp with Zappos adaptability. Um, we uh, Kohl's in the U.S. is going to put us in 600 stores for the fourth quarter. Wow. And we're going to be selling on Macy's online. But the fourth thing, we have a new program we're rolling out called JCS Champions. And the idea is we want to put people with differing ability into their own business. We're going to give them a business in a box so they can own their own micro business. We're going to give them a stand and inventory um, so they can go and train it so they can have their own business and they can market it and they can go to craft fairs or farmers markets or maybe a local store and set something up there. It will start as a micro business and can stay a micro business so that you can earn, you, it's your business, not a franchise, it's your business and you can earn money but not go over the limits where you'd lose your benefits. But if you want to grow it to a larger business, we will support you in doing that. And our goal is over five years, we want to put 1,000 people with differing abilities into business. So we're really excited about that. Oh, I bet. That's, that's you know, an amazing goal, but I think it's an amazing thing to do. So, um, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of people that I can feel the messages coming in of people going, oh, how do I, how do I help with that? Because I think that that's, you know, that's, it's important, but I think, you know, encouraging whoever it is to, you know, take that leap of faith and to start their own business is something that we need to continuously do because I think entrepreneurship is so rewarding. It is. It's, it's not for everybody, but entrepreneurs can have a great impact in the world. Um, I'm part of an organization called the Entrepreneurs Organization, in a real catchy name. It's a, an international group. I think there are about 17,000 entrepreneurs in it um, who are ambitious people to have an impact. And so we love the idea of showing what people with different abilities can do. And that entrepreneurs is, is an option for them. And we've supported that in our business. We've um, we put together Down syndrome super boxes that feature products made by other businesses that are owned by or led by or focus on people with Down syndrome. And we put together an autism box like that. Um, we've done some joint ventures with other businesses. Anything we can do to promote, look what folks can do. And we love entrepreneurs, right? That's our tribe. I know. Um, so we speak at a lot of universities, to entrepreneurial programs, um, to let them know what's possible. Look at the impact you can have. Yeah. Listen, we sell socks, which more basic than that. But then you make it transformative by having a purpose and a focus and, and a sense of imagination of, of seeing what you can do with it. Yeah, I love that. Well. Mark, John, thank you so much for spending time with me. And I hope that you continue to remain the biggest knuckleheads in the world so that you can spread even more joy. We, yes, well, we are, we are a couple of knuckleheads selling socks. Yet at the same time, all we want to do is change the world. Yeah. Right. Um, we should give a plug. Give yeah, a plug. yeah, I was going to. Where can you get our socks? I, I go at johnscrazysocks.com. And when you go to johnscrazysocks.com, not only are you going to get great socks and great service, but you're going to help us employ people with different abilities. You're going to help us give back. You're going to help us spread happiness. Do you have some advice for Foxy, I for the Foxy listeners? I do that. Um, Follow your heart, follow your dreams, work hard, so you can do. Yeah. Oh, that is a perfect way to end this episode and inspire even more people to go out in the world. Thank you for that, John. 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We really enjoyed this. Thank you so much again to Mark and John for coming on the show, sharing their road that they have taken. And I'm so excited to see all of the other amazing stuff and incredible designs that they're going to be creating coming up. So don't forget to head to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. Click on blogs on the left-hand side. You're going to see this episode. I'm going to show you the socks that I recently purchased, which I'm really excited for. And you're also going to be able to find all of the ways that you can connect to buy your own socks. So don't forget to use code FOX22 and get your 10% discount when you go and purchase your socks. And when you do, make sure that when you receive them, that you post them on social media and use the hashtag spread happiness, hashtag love my JCS, John's Crazy Socks, so that I can follow and see what designs were your favorite that you decided to pick. I can't wait to see and to share. And they are really great socks. I know you'll love them. I love mine. Don't forget to also send something out on March 21st, which is coming up very soon, which is National Down Syndrome Day and a perfect day to pull out some crazy socks to wear and help support a great cause. So no matter what you're doing today, make sure that you take a moment to do what John does and spread a little bit of happiness and have some fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?